Coming up on First at Four, one Eastern Kentucky sheriff was in court today facing an assault charge after an incident at a high school basketball game last month. And more schools are turning to the use of NTI days as COVID cases quickly add up. And we may not have much snow to deal with, but we're not done yet with winter's chill. I'll have the very latest coming up. First at Four is next. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. Governor Andy Bashir is holding a news conference on COVID-19 as the Omicron variant continues to spread across Kentucky. On Friday, more than 16,000 new cases were reported and the positivity rate was above 32%, both records. Now you can watch that news conference on our second channel, H&I, or the WYMT Facebook page in its entirety. We do plan to carry some of it live here on WYMT when it begins. But first at four, the Owsley County Sheriff was in court this morning for an arraignment after he was accused of assaulting a girl in early December. Sheriff Brent Lynch was charged with fourth degree assault. Troopers say he tried to break up a fight between two players at the Perry County Central and Owsley County girls basketball game. WYMT's Dakota Makris was in the courtroom today and will bring us the latest on this coming up tonight at six o'clock. The Perry County School District is using NTI days today through Friday due to a COVID outbreak. Many school employees, teachers and bus drivers have tested positive recently, keeping many schools from being able to operate in person as normal. Superintendent Jonathan Jett says in order to follow isolation protocols and prevent any new exposure, they made the decision to keep kids at home for classes this week. It's uh, more than anything staffing shortage. Uh, we had multiple bus drivers that were out. Some of those were unvaccinated, which would require a 10 day isolation period. Um, so we were looking at doubling up uh, six to eight routes, which put a lot more kids on buses. Some kids possibly uh, arriving late to school. 122 new COVID cases were reported today alone in Perry County by the Kentucky River District Health Department. Perry County is far from alone in this situation. The surge is loosening its grip on the northeast, but has yet to peak in other areas of the country, including here in Kentucky, and it's challenging hospitals and schools across the U.S. This comes as some Virginia districts take legal action against their new Republican governor the day his order allowing parents to opt out of school mask mandates for their children takes effect. CBS's Skyler Henry is in Washington, D.C. with more. The Omicron variant is retreating in some parts of the U.S., but remains relentless in other areas, especially where vaccination rates are still lagging. We're never really going to get to herd immunity as long as only two-thirds of the country is vaccinated. We really need to get to 85, 90 percent. Right. The surge forced nearly 4,500 schools to cancel in-person learning for at least one day last week. Some districts, like this one in Patterson, New Jersey, are running a rigorous testing program to stay open. For us, being vaccinated, being boosted, uh, and having a test is the answer. Seven Virginia school divisions, including the district right here in Fairfax County, filed a lawsuit on Monday challenging the Republican governor's executive order allowing parents to opt out of mask mandates for their children. We don't find ourselves uh, here out of um, <laughs> desire. Fairfax County School Board Chair Stella Pekarski says masks have helped keep transmission low and schools open. This is a clear clash of um, you know, what is the constitutional authority of local school boards to make policies for their for their school systems? Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin's spokesperson said they are committed to aggressively defending parents' fundamental right to make decisions with regard to their child's upbringing, education, and care as the legal process plays out. Meanwhile, the first of the federal government's free N95 masks began arriving at some U.S. pharmacies Monday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Fairfax County, Virginia. About 100 teachers in Richmond, Virginia called out sick to protest the governor's executive order. 
As for the Omicron variant itself, the World Health Organization says we cannot let our guard down yet, but the Omicron variant offers some plausible hope for stabilization and normalization. Well, the COVID-19 vaccine could be part of that normalization and eventually become a yearly shot. At least that's the hope of Pfizer CEO Albert Borla. In an interview with an Israeli news outlet, he said he wants people to get a yearly COVID-19 vaccine like the flu instead of having them get a booster every few months. Borla said it would be easier to convince people to get vaccinated that way. Right now, Pfizer is looking to create a vaccine that protects against Omicron and some of the other variants. Well, we've seen a mix of sun and clouds throughout the day today. More clouds than sun around the region. We're going to continue to see that trend as we head into tonight as we continue to see another system head our way. High Nob Camera at UVA Wise showing some of those clouds continuing to work on through the region. A little bit of sun peeking through, but... Otherwise, we remain cloudy. Take it to Pine Mountain Camera, US 119. Plenty of clouds still there, and even a little bit of snow still on the ground, especially in those grassy surfaces. We won't have to be dealing with much travel trouble, though, as we continue throughout the next little bit. Temperatures right now around or just above average, mid to upper 40s, even a few 50s as you head out into the Cumberland Valley. It's 50 in Somerset and Monticello at this hour, but look what's to the north. Yeah, we made ahead a few of those uh, flurries this morning along the I-64 corridor, but we've got some more on the way, starting off, of course, as some rain as we push through the rest of the evening hours. So keep that WYMT weather app handy. You're going to need it as we head through tonight because we will have potential for rain turning to snow as we head down back into the 30s tonight and even colder as we head into the day tomorrow. I'll have all the details on that coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? Evan, thank you very much. So let's go now to Frankfurt Live and listen in to some of Governor Bashir's news conference today on COVID-19. Uh, when we look at different totals and what's removed, I think we have just a few examples for you today. For instance, Caldwell County estimates 275,000 uh, cubic yards of, of debris, 136,164 removed. Christian County, about 30,000. Uh, estimated uh, cubic yards, about 12,058 removed. Fulton County, it's about half, but look at Graves, 2 million um, cubic yards of debris. That's going to take significant time. And remember, some of these places that have been hit when it is just residential, it may be. All right, obviously the governor is talking about uh, tornado recovery efforts before he gets into COVID. Uh, we'll continue to monitor it if we need to go to him uh, about the COVID information a little later on, we will. And in the meantime, if you want to watch the governor, you can see that on our second channel, Heroes and Icons, or the WIMT Facebook page. Well, the Big Blue Slam Blood Drive kicked off today. This is the 14th year for the competition between UK and the Florida Gators. It's a chance for Kentucky fans to help save lives through the Kentucky Blood Center. This year's drive comes as the nation is facing a major blood shortage due to the pandemic. The drive runs through Friday and folks here in eastern Kentucky have a few different options to join in. Two of Kentucky's six KBC donation centers are in our region. You can find those in Pikeville and Somerset. There are also two mobile blood drives people can take part in. One of those is in Morgan County on Thursday. That will run from 1230 to 6 p.m. The other is in Letcher County on Friday from 1 until 6 p.m. Well, today kicks off the official start of this year's tax filing season, meaning people can begin filing. However, the state will not begin processing those tax returns until February 7th. Electronic returns will take about two to three weeks to process with refunds issued shortly after. The state says due to COVID, they do have limited staff, but will work hard to process returns quickly. You can check the status of your refund on the state's website. The deadline to file is April 18th. Kentucky tornado survivors have about a month longer. As millions of Americans get ready to file their taxes, parents are advised to keep a special eye out for an IRS mailing known as Letter 6419. The letter pertains to 2021's Advanced Child Tax Credit, which was paid out from July through December. 
Families received up to $300 for each kid ages 5 and up and $250 for children between 6 and 17. Letter 6419 will help parents accurately report the amount of money they received. If parents did not receive one or more payments, they are encouraged to call the IRS at 800-908-4184. If you get paid for goods and services on Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal, you might be affected by a new tax rule. Payment app providers must now issue users a 1099-K form if they make more than $600 through business transactions during the year. Previously, the form was only issued if a user had more than 200 business transactions in a year, totaling at least $20,000. So reimbursing a friend for dinner or receiving money for a group gift does not count. Forms will not be going out until early 2023 since the change starts this tax year. Google is being sued for allegedly using deceptive practices to track the locations of its users. The District of Columbia filed a lawsuit against the tech giant Monday, alleging Google uses dark patterns to track physical locations, even when users try to block these efforts. The lawsuit says this happens when all of Google's users, whether you are an Apple or Android device, on Android device or just using a computer. The lawsuit claims Google misled people about how they can opt out of tracking by failing to mention other settings that collect data. Google has not responded. Head over to Wall Street now on this Monday. The Dow ends up closing up more than 101 points after a rough start earlier in the day. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. Still ahead on first and four, look at what some are calling the most exciting weekend in NFL football playoff history. I can confirm that. Cold temperatures, though, continue to set up shop in the mountains as we head through the week. I'll have the latest on when we see some breaks as well.